So problem one, we have 20 kilomoles of ethane being combusted with excess air in a burner and the conversion is 90%. And the questions are, what is the flow rate of unreacted oxygen? What's the mole fraction of nitrogen and so on? So firstly, we draw our system. So we have our feed of ethane, we have our airstream, and we have our product gas. So the amount of ethane coming in is actually just given in the problem statement. It's 20 kilomoles per hour of ethane. And the amount of oxygen coming in, we calculate that using the stoichiometric ratio of 3.5 and the 15% excess. And the result of that is that we have 80.5 kilomoles per hour of oxygen. Nitrogen flowing in, we just calculate from the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen and air, which is 79 over 21, and we get 302.83 kilomoles per hour of nitrogen. So in our mass balance table, we need our disappearance term for ethane. So we're told in the problem statement that the conversion is 90%. So we multiply by 20 kilomoles per hour by 0.9, we get 18 kilomoles per hour. Obviously the disappearance of oxygen is just the amount of ethane that's reacting multiplied by three and a half, which gives us 63 kilomoles per hour. The next terms that are required in our mass balance table are actually the generation terms. So we'll erase that disappearance. So firstly for CO2, we have 18 kilomoles of ethane reacting. We produce two kilomoles of CO2 for every kilomole of ethane that reacts. So the, the generation is 36 kilomoles per hour of CO2. Likewise for water, we produce three kilomoles of water for every kilomole of ethane that reacts. So we produce 54 kilomoles per hour in total. So now that we have all of those terms, we can put them into our mass balance table. So I've already put the molecular masses in there. Ethane, our flow in, is just 20 kilomoles per hour. We calculated the oxygen that flows in based on the excess and the nitrogen based on the ratio of nitrogen and oxygen in air. We just multiply those terms through the molecular mass by the flow to get the mass flow. Obviously, we assume there's no CO2 or water vapour in our feed. The disappearance terms, we calculated those on the previous slide. There's no disappearance of nitrogen. We assume it doesn't react in this system. The only products, the only terms that have a generation aspect are CO2 and, uh, and water. And so our flow out terms, we just calculate as the flow in minus disappearance plus generation. And for CO2 and water vapour, it's only the generation term. So we can multiply through to calculate the mass flows out of the system. Quite a large number for nitrogen. Small mistake there. So to check for consistency in our mass balance table, we can sum the mass flow in and the mass flow out. We get 11,655.3. They agree with each other, which they should, because total mass is a conserved quantity. So now we can answer the questions. So the flow rate of unreacted oxygen in the product stream is 17.5 kilomoles per hour. We just read that from the table. The mole fraction of nitrogen in the product stream is just the molar flow of nitrogen in the product stream divided by the total molar flow. So we're adding the individual ones here together or we could have added all the molar flows together on the mass balance table. The answer when we plug that into our calculator is...
zero point seven three four. And finally, the mass flow rate of air supplied to the burner is just the mass flow rate of oxygen plus the mass flow rate of nitrogen. When we add those two terms together from our mass balance table, we get 11,055. So problem two, we're looking at the dehydrogenation of propane to make propene in a catalytic reactor. The feed is at 280 degrees Celsius in a flow of 5 kilomoles per hour and the conversion in our reactor is 80%. We're given there the standard heat of reaction, 1.2 by 10 to the 8th joules per kilomole of propane and we're given our two specific heat capacities. We're asked what rate must heat be added to the reactor to, to achieve a product stream temperature of 290 degrees Celsius in one other question. So we draw our system. So here we are with our catalytic reactor. I'm drawing in a little packed bed in the middle there. That's actually our catalyst. Our feed to the reactor is pure propane. And because we only have 80% conversion, we have some propane in the product stream. We have propane and we have hydrogen. So the mass balance is quite straightforward for this system. The flow in is just propane at 5 kilomoles per hour. The disappearance term is that flow rate multiplied by the 80% conversion, so it's just 4 kilomoles per hour. There are no other dis disappearance terms. Generation is very straightforward because uh, all of the ratios in the balanced chemical equation are 1 to 1 to 1. So we produce propene and hydrogen at a rate of 4 kilomoles per hour. So it's very straightforward to calculate the flow out for propane. It's just the flow in minus the disappearance. So we have one kilomole per hour and the flow out for propane and hydrogen is four kilomoles per hour, which is the rate at which they're generated. So with those numbers, we can plug them into our mass balance table and we multiply the molar mass by the molar flow rate to get the mass flow rate. So these are all values that we calculated on the previous slide. We calculate our mass flows out of the system and that's important because we always like to calculate the sum of the mass flows in and the sum of the mass flows out. In this case, they're both 220 kilograms per hour, which is good because total mass is a conserved quantity. So our first question was, what rate must heat be added to the reactor? We need to assume that the changes in kinetic energy and potential energy and the shaft work are all negligible. Looks like that's been cut off the side of the screen there, unfortunately. The result of that is that delta H equals Q dot. So our expression for delta H is this one. So this is on the formula sheet that's given to you in the test. And we also have been through it in class. So we can just substitute in all of the numbers and take a careful note of the units. So I'm writing the units in here so that we can check that they're consistent. 220 kilograms per hour is our mass flow rate into the system and the same mass flow rate out of the system. 2400 joules per kilogram Kelvin is the heat capacity of the feed stream. And Unfortunately, 
the last little bit has just been cut off the edge of our image there. So that gives us 4.97 by 10 to the 8th joules per hour. We need to convert that back to kilojoules per second because we're asked for our answer in kilowatts. It's 138 and the closest from the multiple choice answers is 133. The mole fraction, mole fraction of propane in the stream leaving the reactor is very straightforward to calculate. It's just one kilomole per hour divided by the total molar flows out. So the mole fraction is 0.111 which was option A in that problem. The final problem is the long answer question where we have 100 kilomoles per hour at 25 degrees Celsius being combusted in a reactor with 1000 kilomoles per hour of air. We have two reactions taking place so we have two heats of reaction which are given there in the problem statement. The conversion by reaction 1 is 90% and the conversion by reaction 2 is 10% and we're given the mean specific heat capacity of the product gases. So we need to complete this mass balance table so all the molar masses are actually given to us on the test paper Our flow in of methane was 100 kilomoles per hour. The flow in of air was 1,000 kilomoles per hour. So because nitrogen and oxygen are in the ratio of 79 to 21, it's just 790 kilomoles per hour of nitrogen and 210 of oxygen. We can multiply through to get the mass flows into our system. It's, again, it's quite a large number for nitrogen. and we assume that there's no water vapour, CO or CO2 coming into our reactor. The disappearance term, we, we know that 100% of the methane is converted, 90% by reaction 1 and 10% by reaction 2. For oxygen we need to calculate how much is consumed in reaction 1, so that's 0 0.9 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 2, and how much in reaction 2. So that's the 10% conversion multiplied by 100 kilomoles per hour of methane multiplied by 3 over 2, which is the ratio for oxygen consumed in reaction 2. So the net consumption is 195 kilomoles per hour. We can write that into our table. Nitrogen doesn't react. The other streams are assumed not fed in. The generation terms, we calculate them in exactly the same way. So we look at the stoichiometric coefficient for water. It's quite simple for water because the coefficient is 2 for both reactions. So we just get a production or a generation of 200 kilomoles per hour of water vapour. CO is only produced in reaction 2 and the stoichiometric coefficient is 1. So the conversion is 10% multiplied by 100 kilomoles per hour feed of methane gives us 10 kilomoles per hour of CO being produced and likewise CO2 is produced in reaction 1. The coefficient is 1 so our net production is 90 kilomoles per hour. So we can write those terms into our mass balance table. The flow out terms are just calculated from the flow in minus disappearance plus generation. and we can multiply through the flow out by the molar mass to get the mass flow out of our system. So one of the reasons we calculate the mass flow in and out of the system is so that we can compare it on both sides of the mass balance table and total mass is a conserved quantity so those numbers should agree with each other. So the first question was to complete the mass balance table. We did that on the previous slide. Then we're asked what is the mass flow of nitrogen into the system. So we can see that here in the table. It's 22,000 
120 kilograms per hour. So to get the marks for that question, we need to write out that answer statement. Part 3 is very straightforward to calculate. It's just the mole fraction of oxygen in the product gas. So we have 15 kilomoles per hour of oxygen flowing out, which is the unreacted oxygen, divided by the total molar flow out of the system. And to get the full marks, we need to write out our answer statement. And finally, we're asked to calculate what rate of heat removal is required to achieve a product gas temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius. So we assume that the changes in kinetic energy, change in potential energy in the shaft work are all negligible, and our energy balance simplifies to delta H equals Q dot. So we start with a, a fresh slide here. And we write our, our expression for the change in total enthalpy. So we have two chemical reactions occurring in this system. So we need two terms with a molar rate of disappearance and a standard heat of reaction. Then we have our mass flow into the system and our mass flow out of the system. Fortunately, in this example, T1 equals 25 degrees Celsius. So that particular term goes to zero. Then all we need to do is write in the terms for this equation. There's quite a lot of them. I've included the units here so that we can check. So in the problem statement, these heats of reaction were given in joules per mole. So I've written it as 10 to the 5 joules per kilomole. There's our mass flow rate coming out of the system. Our heat capacity of the product gases was 1,480 joules per kilogram Kelvin. T2, we're told, we're achieving 1,200 degrees Celsius, minus 25. So that whole statement will give us an answer in joules per hour. So we need to divide that by 3,600 seconds and 1,000 joules to get an answer in kilojoules per second. The answer is that the change in total enthalpy is minus 2.14 by 10 to the 7 kilojoules per second. So that makes sense because the combustion of methane is an exothermic reaction, so heat is being removed from the system. So to get our full marks, we just write our answer statement that heat must be removed at a rate of 2.14 by 10 to the 7 kilowatts.